The room was dark, still, and deathly quiet. Only the faintest light trickled in from the window, which was currently covered by window blinds. The air was cool, despite it being a late summer afternoon. The door to the mall apartment opened, and Trixie sighed des depressingly to herself as she entered the small apartment. Closing the door behind her, she had failed again, and now on the run. She went from ho motel to motel in hopes of evading the authorities. Well, actually in hopes of evading the one she feared most, who she knew would kill her out outright if he got to the chance. She flicked the light switch on and turned around to proceed into the small living quarters. She let out a still gasp as she saw me, saw me sitting on the fine office chair. She had locked the door before she left this morning, afternoon to get herself something to eat, but I had let myself in without the need of a door. Is Trixie surprised? I asked calmly. She gulped. Sit down. But she didn't listen, and instead, instead slowly took a step back. I pulled out my Desert Eagle and leveled in the sights on her head. Sit down! I yelled sternly. She gulped and nodded, and then did as I demanded. She slowly and cautiously took a seat on the couch across from me. I stood up and tossed the photo onto her lap. It was the photo. You don't know who they are, but you were responsible for their deaths. If Celestia hadn't stopped me that day, I wouldn't would have blown your head clean off, I told her coldly. She was breathing heavily and erratically in to total fear. She picked up the picture on her right hoof and brought it closer to her face so she could ex better examine it. I, I'm so sorry. I know that it doesn't mean anything coming from me, but I swear I never meant to do what I did to you. She apologized. Her words were touching, but didn't change my mind. I knew what I had to do. I took another step towards her so that we were merely a few feet away. She looked up to me with a solemn look. Go ahead. Do it. Prove that you're an animal. But please, make it quick, she pleaded. I cocked back the hammer on the massive handgun manually with my thumb. Tears came to her eyes as she looked death right in the face, with fear stricken all over her. She looked me right in the, fa right in the face, almost like she was looking deep into my soul. It didn't matter, though. If I let her go, then in another few years she'd do this all over again. I squeezed the trigger and Desert Eagle thundered in the room. Its gunshot echoed off the wall. The 50 caliber, caliber AE round slammed into its mark perfectly. Floor's perspective. I stood there waiting for Dale to return. The others were here as well. Dale stepped out of the small motel room. Three royal guards po guard ponies entered as soon as he left. The gunshot had been over an hour ago, and Celestia was the only pony to talk to him since. He approached Applejack and myself, but Applejack spoke first. You... Didn't kill her? She asked curiously. No, he replied bluntly. Applejack raised an eyebrow in shock. <coughs> I'm surprised. Why? Think I'm an animal? No, not for that that reason. I, po I suppose you have no gr regrets. None. You? No, well, yes. I'm sorry, Dale. I, I should have been more considerate of you. Uh, you worked so worked harder than any of our family, yet we treat you so horribly. If you can ever he hear me out, then please understand that from the bottom of my heart, I am truly sorry for the way we treated you, she apologized. There was a deafening, long silence that seemed to drag on forever. Dale smirked. I forgive you. Just don't bring it up ever again. All right, he replied, and the reply took us all off guard. That easily? She asked curiously, and, she, and he nodded, but... She must have understood why I accepted her apology so easily because he didn't ask why. She didn't ask why. In the background, Trixie had, was pulled away. Her horn was missing and blood trailed down her face. Alpjack raised an eyebrow. I don't suppose you know anything about that? She asked, and Dale simply shrugged. Wish I could help. He applied, and there was another bit of silence. Alpjack started another conversation. Chrysalis was has become a hero. Apparently, she's working on... On a peace treaty with Celestia and Luna? She told Dale, who simply nodded. Then I guess everything worked out in the end, Dale said and began to walk towards me. He placed his arm around my neck and I snug snuggled up tightly against his, his side. After I called out to Dale, Dale! Big Macintosh wants you, you back on the farm, she informed him. Dale stopped, and so did I. He turned his head slightly so he could make eye contact with her. I never left, he replied. And again we both, both began to walk away. Dale dropped something, but I couldn't see what it was. It jingled and sounded 
like sounded kind of like his dog tags. Suddenly, a familiar pony in a fine dress attire came racing around the street corner. Oh, oh, Flo, oh, Flo, I I'm so happy to see you. You're all right. I came as soon as I heard. Fancy Pants gasped. As soon, as soon as I, you heard, or well, as soon as you were done with Cactus Lily, I asked, and Fancy Pants gulped. How do you do you know about her? I, I mean, who's Cactus Lily? I told you that these ludicrous stories about her and I. We never did anything like that. He exclaimed, and I raised an eyebrow. I didn't say you did anything with her. So it's true. You've been cheating on me this whole time. Well, it's over, Fancy. I'm leaving you. I told him sternly. He sneered. Oh yeah? For who? No pony will take you. You're a snooty bitch. He commented with a cruel laugh, but never got to finish his cruel comment. A powerful blow across his face knocked him out cold. I looked in shock at Fancy's unconscious body, and then to Dale, who simply shook his ha hand in minor pain and shrugged. Meh. He was an ass. He chuckled and put his ar arm around me again. I felt content, loved, and lucky to be alive. In only a very short time, I'd fallen in love with someone who wasn't my species and didn't really th like me right off the bat, but somehow things had worked out. I snuggled my cheek against his chest. He gave me a quick kiss, and we walked off into the beautiful sunset.